Hello everyone, my name is David Ewan, and let me tell you, I have a great blessing to see all of you again today, so thank you for being here. I've come to know that many people are not aware of what civilian United States ambassador professors do, and how they were the original front line of defense prior to the huge COVID-19 coronavirus outbreak in America. Hello, my name again is David Ewan, serving in my second five-year term as a double certified ambassador professor to the nations. And today, we'll talk about what people like me do and how ambassador professors tried and failed to warn America of what has come in terms of the 2020 pandemic known as coronavirus, the COVID-19 infection that's ravished all over the United States. As a civilian entity, the Office of Ambassador Professor is civilian and business run. A small office such as this does not have governmental influence, especially in matters of such magnitude, such as a global pandemic. Nonetheless, we are still held to high expectations, as always, as we are the civilian face of America to the nations. My office reaches out to Asia, the Middle East, Europe, Russia, and Latin America. It is no secret that COVID-19 coronavirus has ravished America of its normal lifestyle. Let me first mention that I give great appreciation to all first responders, doctors, nurses, nurses I should say, and other hospital care workers. Our police and fire department and other civil services have been doing an incredible job. Their work has been tremendous, and it has been a tremendous sacrifice, not only to them, but to their families as well. Nothing can take away from that recognition. So moving forward, I'm not taking away from that at all. And we had publicly announced that previously. I give great thanks to those who are on the front lines risking their lives to help citizens get through. All of the workers mentioned before are truly on the front line working tirelessly and diligently and with sacrifice. But do you know who were the original front line of defense before the virus hit the United States? I will tell you, it was the ambassador professors working in China representing the United States who gave warning. It's not just me, it's many others. That's where it started and we all uh, saw it coming. And each ambassador professor has a team of people behind them. So it's not just one person. And for each person that is identified as an ambassador professor, it's a team of people. For me, I have 45 people on my team. The warnings given were largely ignored because the significance of this epidemic that had been growing in China was not fully accepted in America. I understand that. It was not possible to fathom something never seen in modern times within people's lifetime. The warnings from a small civilian office of an ambassador professor would not be like, well, I would tell you, it, it would seem like scare tactics with other motives in mind. It would not be taken the right way. To, to others, it would seem like a conspiracy theory as the reality of it seems so far-fetched. It was something that could not be believed in modern times. It was too big for the mind to imagine. We were left silent and unheard, but we did speak. Even before the outbreak of the COVID-19 coronavirus, the plague of regular pollution was widely known in busy cities such as Beijing, China. I remember in 2015 being a serious hit time with outdoor restrictions and of course the traditional face masks worn by all those who walked outside. I remember that. The ambassador professors working in China knew for years that something was brewing and gave warning, but no one listened. But it's not their fault. We didn't know how to speak. But it's good that no one listened because it's not really a bad thing. Sometimes a warning is not what people need. It's the experience. 
Experience such as what COVID-19 coronavirus has bestowed can change the way people think for future maturity in the way they handle pandemics in the future. The bird flu of 1918 was so long ago that people forgot the global pain that the world had gone through. Perhaps we needed another reminder. Perhaps a warning would not be enough from an ambassador professor. Yet a warning needed to be given. Not for the ambassador professor to say, I told you so. No, it's not that at all. It's important that history documents warnings given and the actions taken, or in this case, non-actions taken, so that we can learn from them in the future. We as a global culture must recognize how we face pandemics in the future. It was in 2015, the founder of Microsoft, Bill Gates, at one of those famous TED Talks, uh, those conferences, it was formally announced that we were not ready for a pandemic. There's a very common eight minute video on YouTube, you can search for it. He even referred to the famous 2011 movie called Contagion that showed what it would look like. Granted, it was Hollywood, but it gave a good sense of the transmission of the disease that was undetectable in the beginning. It's the ambassador professors that followed on the coattails of Bill Gates' warning given at the TED Talk in 2015. But as professors, the world of academia can only offer warnings that the world will only accept as theoretical and not as a call to action. Again, it was only considered theoretical instead of an actual call to action. We are not in that authority. We are not a government entity. So that is what the world missed. It was the call to action. Of course, it's not widely known that ambassador professors uh, working in China gave warning of the pending catastrophe. Who would listen? And if no one listened, who would remember? Therefore, it is not known. In academia, ambassador professors are looked upon as the face of the nation to other nations in specific industries of study. It's theoretical. It's only theoretical. Perhaps our current situation should have us heed to theoretical warnings. After all, that's what Bill Gates was doing, but he has much greater clout being the founder of Microsoft and his current stature in the economy and uh, world economics. We can even go beyond theoretical warnings. If we turn to the Bible, the book of Revelations tells us what is to come. The COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic is much smaller than what the book of Revelation teaches us. Is it our nature to ignore warnings? I'm not sure. But if the warnings aren't given, then those with prior knowledge are the ones to blame. We shouldn't live in a world to prevent blame, but to heed to the warnings. Many people wonder what an ambassador professor does. Let me take a moment to explain. It's an international office held in the civilian sector with chosen industries based on the academic specialties provided by the ambassador representing the United States and speaking to the nation. As for myself, I'm a double certified ambassador professor to the nations in the civilian sectors of business, education, and technology. Our focus in international academics is entrepreneurial studies, educational development, and technology support. Our regional areas of support are in Asia, the Middle East, Europe, Russia, and Latin America. All work is done aboard the Toka Enterprise 2061 with a crew consisting of a crowdsourced, scalable, on-demand workforce. We have 45 stations for staff being filled in a scaled, crowdsourced manner. Our 45 stations are split up in four distinct departments tech, operations, client relations, and audit. The tech relates to the international uh, internet connections. Operations relates to the scheduling with clients. Client relations 
relates to recruiting clients, and audit relates to compliance to international laws. There's more to it, but that's basically what the TOCA Enterprise is built upon. It was back in 2015, our first five-year term as Ambassador Professor began with our team. As we now continue through our second five-year term, we are more connected than ever to the issues of citizens and professional economy in the areas of business, education, and technology. It was in this situation that we were able to see the COVID-19 coronavirus coming. We captured the news. We saw the governmental downplays. We observed changes in business behavior. By knowing how the world economy ticks, we saw that something was amiss. We saw danger coming. Back here in the United States, we were ready as an office. Before Americans were having their eggnog for Christmas, we were on alert and that was in 2019. Before Americans were having champagne for New Year's, we were at red alert battle stations. So it was between Christmas and New Year's here in the United States that we went to battle stations. That was December 28th, 2019. But we were getting the news and getting prepared and getting an alert in uh, November. And then we were on high alert before Christmas, and then we went to battle stations uh, in uh, just before New Year's. It was December 28th. So I'll always remember December 28th, 2019. That was the day that it all started. We braced for impact, and then it came. Even though we saw it coming in November 2019, our team couldn't believe it in 2020 when it came. The first confirmed case of COVID-19 coronavirus infection in the United States was reported on January 20th, 2020. As of January 30th, 2020, a total of 9,976 cases had been reported in at least 21 countries. On February 29th, 2020, the first death was reported in the United States. The following month, new vocabulary was added to our daily lives. In March 2020, the phrase social distancing entered into our vocabulary. Then came the government imposed lockdowns that closed businesses, producing massive layoffs, requiring government stimulus packages. We saw a lot of news reports that we had never seen before of such huge magnitude. It was in March 2020 that the fight for survival was on. The number of cases and the deaths kept rising, but they kept rising exponentially. As of this broadcast of the fifth edition of the second season of Inspire, it is April 2020. This is considered the peak of the outbreak in the United States. Yes, Six months ago, we saw it coming, and here we are. As a small civilian entity, the Office of Ambassador Professor to the Nations does not have the voice needed for such a warning. I understand that, I get that. Perhaps not today, but someday. Maybe we'll have it. Our goal in the future is to have such a voice. We are in a unique position to know what is happening around the world and how it impacts relating countries. That's our job. In many ways, we are the boots on the ground as we have direct connections to the swaths of civilian populations around the world. Our voice is one of education. No one can take that away from you. With education that is applied to hands-on application, there is experience. The use of that experience is wisdom. Our office intends to be the producers of wisdom. The scripture for Jeremiah 29 11 reads, For I know the plans I have for you, 
declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. We believe our office has an important job to do. My name is Ambassador Professor David K. Ewan to the nations from the United States. And this is Inspire.